Hello, hello, hello. Sorry for the delay about that. Um, <laughs> welcome to Comedy Intercourse, Season 3, Episode 3. Uh, it's a very special episode today because Chris isn't here. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, too loud, Eddie. Far, far too loud. Bars. I'm so- just so excited to not have him here. <laughs> You know what? I, I I'm really enjoying it too. It's it's great. So I just thought we'd have a bit of celebration music on. You know, just get in the mood. He's not here. We can have a great show. There's no babble like in my ear all the time, messing about with the computer. He always comes on and he's like, "Why, I man? Let's do late. I'm gonna meet a rubbish or not?" And he, you're like, "No, let's not do it this time." <laughs> yeah, he he is. He's 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 completely annoying. Um, well, that's not fair. What? Nothing. <laughs> okay, that's enough for celebration music. No, I'm genuinely saddened that Chris can't be with us, actually. Uh, his water aerobics course ran over time. <laughs> he can't be here for that He's reason. He's not very good at it. But don't worry, we've got plenty of comedy stuff for uh, all you fans out there. <laughs> we've got some you pe- shouldn't laugh when you're addressing fans. <laughs> That's no, we not, got, no, 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 no. We got not filling with confidence here. No, I was, we, my agent told me this was top dollar, top numbers. Who's your agent? Is it you? My, I'm not going to say. Okay. okay. It's a gentleman's agreement. But we st- we've still got everything that you usually hear when you listen to this show. We've got some TV to review, we've got some radio to review, we've got a film uh, that we're going to review after the halftime break, which is very exciting. Um, we're going to cap it off with some uh, live at Leeds stuff. Um, but before any of that, let's introduce our guests, and we can decide which are the special ones and which are the normal ones. Uh, sitting opposite me is none other than comedian Kevin Eady. Make some noise, Kev. Oh, uh, uh, Eddie Hurst has just broken my headphones, so I apologise if I can't. <laughs> oh, come I can't on, it was only a little ribbing. But, uh, no, no, it's fine. Okay, Keep you. No. Uh, Eddie's currently so strutting around the head, studio, anyway. messing around with the headphones, and as a result, the flow of the show has been uh, unavoidably <laughs> ended. Uh, do you want to sit back down, Eddie? Because I'm going to be honest, it's a little bit distracting. I'm sorry, I've just sit <laughs> down! I can hear you without without headphones. It's cool. Yeah, I can. <sighs> None of them are working. Really, now. really it, wanting Chris here now. This is just not good enough. <laughs> um, I'm back in the room, Richard. Okay. How can I help? <laughs> <laughs> Not, not not something he normally says. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because it's known. Oh, yeah. Dear God. Okay. Hey, I'm, not sure, I'm okay. not sure if I'm qualified to be a, com- a comedian. You're a comedian. But I don't I've know, seen you comed. That's just, it's just pregnant with like a plethora of ideals that I can't <laughs> manifest. Yeah, sa- save, it, save it for the essays. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, sitting opposite me is comedian Kevin Eady. Well, there was a wonderful moment there that I just want to say, like, you had, because Kev does a thing when if somebody says something cheeky and he's a little bit offended but he quite likes it, he puts his tongue out <laughs> and he's like, oh, and he did it then and it was wonderful. I do. No, should, I, should I lick the microphone when I do that so the listeners yeah, yeah, so listen at home? Yes, yes, you should. Oh, oh, Jesus. People have got to use that. People have so, used I've that. got to use my tongue. <laughs> Uh, yes, He's wild. We can enjoy your tongue as well by listening to your golden, soothing tones straight out of it's Chester, isn't it? Where you're from? Uh, that's that's where I grew up. Yeah, but it's not really where I'm from. But it was the making. It was the forging. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> it, sh- it didn't shape me. But it was the it was the formation of your beautiful voice, wasn't it? Was it not? It was, it was where it was grounded. I think I think it's from having a uh, a Scottish father and an English mother. And, and four years in, in Edinburgh, and a lot of honey and lemon, and excellent um, room temperature water, and eight years of smoking. Fantastic! <coughs> you sound better than you sound better than Nat King Cole. <laughs> um, uh, sitting diagonally from me is Eddie. Stop it! <laughs> Sorry, I'm so boisterous. Jeez. All right, I'll just introduce you, and then you can uh, then you can quiet okay. then you can quiet down. I'm sorry. I okay, just... so sort of co-host. I say co-host. <laughs> he's really just some sort of yeah. Um, Main host is fair. Ensign, I think. What ensign? If I'm the admiral, you're an ensign. It's the lowest rank in the U.S. Navy. Um, <laughs> on a boat. Um, yeah. So sitting next to me is uh, Eddie Hurst. He'll be filling in for Chris, I think, with the technological gubbins that we need to do. How are you doing, Eddie? Oh, silence now. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, okay. I'm fine, thank you. We, we can move on. Um, and sitting diagonally from me is none other than broadcast journalism student <laughs> Bryony Jameson. Woo! <laughs> Eddie doesn't get a round of applause because he's been bad. <laughs> Not been a naughty one, a been good one. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're going to start off with some uh, TV reviews. Does that sound good? 
don't make faces at each other <laughs> because the medium doesn't allow for people to enjoy that. I explained this before we went in. God I sake. I got a Gene Simmons, Simmons at him. Are we, are we ready to review some TV? Yeah. yeah. Good? Well, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I'm aware of the shows that I've, I don't want... I, I, You're aware of them and of the medium uh, of television, the but fir- you haven't seen them. The first time I heard of the TV shows that we're now going to review yes. uh, was just then when you told me what they were going to be. <laughs> And I had to break it to you that you had someone on the show who didn't know what any of them were. So listen, I'm for a lot of these what? shows, I think that's all you needed to have watched. <laughs> <laughs> Stink <Stinkaroonies. laughs> I'm going to cut your mic off. Oh, um, that. So um, that'll make your contributions interesting, uh, anyway. So yeah, yeah. So we well, can, it'll be like we, we have to explain the shows on you. To Kev. Okay, it so yeah, yeah, I okay, so the, <laughs> <laughs> the idea is, Kev, we just talk about uh, various comedy avenues for about an hour and then we stop doing it. Sound cool? That, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay, so let's all listen to the TV bumper that Chris prepared for us and he can be here in spirit. Let's just enjoy it. It's, uh, it's time for TV, I guess. <laughs> It's playing again for some reason. I didn't actually want that to happen, but there we are. Aye, aye, man. That's the um, TV bumper that um, Chris made for us to signify the fact that the TV uh, section is beginning. Um, okay, so, yeah, we're going we're gonna to jump straight in and talk about Toast of London, which we talked about on the last show, but I feel it would be interesting to get some different perspectives on it. Um, I, for one, have retained my original position of loving the show and thinking that it's brilliant. Eddie, you've seen it now. What do you think? I uh, retain the position of Excellent. loving it and thinking it's brilliant. And I raise you and I enjoyed it as well. I will take I thought, that. No, it's great. It's a good show. Yes. Um, I was very surprised because the adverts for it make it look like it's going to be a complete rubbish one. Yeah. <laughs> like, the adverts really do not do it justice. Because mm-hmm. um, I'd not watched it until you told me to watch it for the show. So I watched it and I enjoyed good it. Good boy. Thanks, Dad. Um, <laughs> You'll get treats later. Really? Yeah, well, no. Oh. Um, um, so yeah, but yeah. No, um, it's it's beautiful. It's like it is. It's it's as close as comedy comes to making beautiful things. Like the sort of. It reminds me a lot of Vic and Bob. Yes, um, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. In that it sort of actualizes uh, imagery and makes it sort of realistically surreal. But that isn't the crux of the. You know, the joke. It's funny before having that. It's hard to explain. It is. Um, Let's play a clip. I guess that's one of the benefits of studying fine art is that you can just <laughs> say lots of words that have yeah. absolutely no meaning. Well, I thought we'd play a clip and then people can judge it from there. Well, Let's I don't think. No, we're not able to do that. <laughs> why not? Do we not have any clips? Because I don't know how, all right? <laughs> I've never used a computer before. That's why you're here. I'm so surprised. Bryony, did you enjoy Toast of London? I've, it's bizarre in the fact that I can't really remember much of it, but I have watched it. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, the bit. Um, it's just Matt Berry. Anything with Matt Berry in it, his voice is just, it's just sticks and burn bridge all over again. <laughs> it is, yes. He does have a special kind of voice that he brings out for nearly all of the comedy that he's done. Is that that's very, his speaking voice? Is it though? He I mean, uses it to speak. No, but it's no. Just stop it. No, um, it genuinely is. I believe it's his voice. I've, but I think I've seen him on interviews, and his voice is actually a lot softer than than his sort of bombastic thespian stylings on Bush and Toast of London and things oh, like that. Oh, maybe. I think it's a lot quieter. It's actually closer to his singing voice, right, I okay. think, which is very thin, almost quite odd, actually. Yeah. So it's really out of character. Is it as if his um, sort of characters are more him than he is himself? Uh, thing. Mm-hmm. That Interesting. No, <laughs> no, it does make sense. Kind of like uh, how Alan Partridge has more or less consumed the man that is Steve Coogan. Would you agree? I would disagree. Okay. Why? Just, just to be controversial. Just don't think it's right. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair enough. No, uh, with I think I think Partridge is a very particular part of Coogan. Like a lot of those sort of comedy characters are like which are very sort of very out there, very obviously a fabrication and couldn't exist anywhere except for that world that it's play- he's placed into. I think it's that with Coogan. Because um, mm-hmm. I, I, I think Steve Coogan himself is a lot more serious than Partridge is. And it's a lot of, a lot of his personality is exaggerated into Partridge, but I think if you look at interviews and stuff like that, mm-hmm. he doesn't go around waving cheese asking for a second series. <laughs> That's um, very true. But so Bear, Barry comes out with the same sort of thing on uh, Toast of London anyway. Um, what about uh, the sort of tone of the show that it strikes with um, 
taking into account who's writing it. It's written by Matt Berry himself, but also Arthur Matthews of Father Ted fame. Ah, and it has okay. a very, I want to say, uh, Channel 4 feel to the whole thing. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean Can by I that? What it's about? In, in like a, Yes. In summary. That'll help the listeners and you. Toast <laughs> of London is about Stephen Toast. A uh, thespian, a sort of seasoned thespian, and the life is he leads. Is this what it's really about, Richard? Yes, no, it is, it is, it is. Okay. Yes, it's um, so ridiculous. He's got a flatmate. Who's his flatmate? His flatmate is also a thespian, I believe. Yeah, but what is he a name? I can't know. I don't okay. think. But, yeah. yeah, it's it's very sort of surreal. and um, But I think there's the surrealness of uh, Matt Berry, which he brings from you know shows like Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. And that's all very yeah, lasting. Um, him and Snuffbox was up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him and Richard Ayoade um, and uh, Fult- Rich Fulcher and people like that. You know, the Mighty Boosh crowd. There was that sort of surrealism and that sort of very, very visual whimsy. Um, and there's that being brought in. But also there's the sort of the good, uh, solid situation comedy uh, that Father Ted had. Oh. Yeah, I think it's a very nice balance, actually. Mm. Well expressed. Thanks, boss, for once. So uh, oh, with way. Nail and I situation to... Out of work actors. Yeah, right? they're not as that. It's not as cre- what I because when I th- saw the trailer for it, you're given the impression that it's going to be like this old souse who's like he's a what, and he, it's sold as if he's a washed up actor. But I don't think he is necessarily washed up. I think he's just a big lovey. Okay. That's unaware yeah. of the world outside him, rather than it being like, oh, you're on your last ropes, toast. Bryony, would you go along with our sort of Channel 4 theory of the show? Yeah, it's definitely, because Channel 4, um, especially with No Fielding's um, luxury comedy, because loads of people hated that, but Channel 4 stuck by it and said, oh, this is our style of comedy. If you don't like it, we'll persevere with it and it'll get a cult following. Oh, okay. So that's their general... For They've said it loads, for loads of things as well. Shame they didn't persist with um, Gaff Marenghi back then, but I think it was before the big ideology right, yeah. oh, okay. started. They, they seem to have a lot of um, hidden, sort of forgotten gems, Channel 4, more than other channels that I can think of, to be quite honest. They always seem to have things that got one or two series, but they sort of stuck with... Uh, which is, there's a lot of hidden stuff like P yeah. versus Life. Oh, I was just going to say. That. <coughs> yeah, it gets really yeah, high. Like it's really highly rated by yeah. people who watch it. And Rafe Spall, yeah. uh, who was most famously known for, uh, he was in the Shadow Line, which was a big BBC um, drama. Like he's a proper actor fellow. Um, and he was in. Uh, oh bloody hell! Life, bloody hell! Life what was? Pie. You can't swear on yes. air. That was, <laughs> bloody's not a swear. Yes, word. it is. <laughs> I just saw hell and it Look was covered in blood. In this in this studio, <laughs> it's 1953 and bloody hell is a swear. <laughs> <laughs> I, see, I've just said oh, it. I'm sorry, you, <laughs> you damn. Oh, see, I've done it again. <laughs> All right, just, just let me just let me collect myself. All right, okay. So we were talking about Pete versus Life and Shadowline. Yeah. Anyway, Rafe Spall, uh, who's quite a big actor now, that was sort of his launching platform, and it was a very good show. It was a it was mm. a good show. It was a solid show. It was a surprisingly sort of accessible show as well, considering how little sort of viewing it got. But, yeah, because it's set yeah. as if it's like a sports commentary, so it's mm. a commentary oh, right. on his life, but like two commentators of a football match oh, saying right. about how um, he wins in life situations and things like he goes on dates with his girlfriend and stuff, and things go. Then he's obviously Pete Nil with life one and stuff like oh, that. Oh right, I so, see. Yeah, that sounds quite good. So it definitely, yeah, it fits into the sort of Channel Four canon of these sort of shows that have a very strong kind of um, comedy ideology but then often they just sort of trail off and yeah. never get they don't get a lot of exposure or even what, remembered very very well mm, i guess well i think i think it's like with channel 4 because they they don't have a service they produce content rather than like whereas the bbc has a service for its viewers so you'll get things like citizen khan and mrs brown's boys and these live studio audience things so the audiences <clears throat> excuse me so the audiences will come along and they'll watch it and it's something that's consi- consistent and every week uh, viewers can go into it and it's like doing a service like my my family was something deliberately aimed at family whereas I think because Channel 4 pre-produce all their shows mm-hmm. and don't have to necessarily obey to certain requirements for audiences mm-hmm. they ma- they can make shows that won't necessarily appeal to everyone yeah Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'd go along with that. Yeah, because yeah, you, because you, at the same time, you do have a sort of BBC feel to um, sitcoms. Often, I find my family, Citizen Khan's another good example. Uh, the Count Arthur Strong, which we reviewed last week, has a very kind of it, BBC it? feel, like yeah. uh, that sort of live studio BBC in-house production sort of business. Uh, yeah, like in in every aspect, even the writing, just the its presentation, the way it looks. Right, so, yeah. so I guess. Uh, yeah, but you know, takes all sorts, doesn't it? Uh, Kev, thoughts yeah. on everything that we've just discussed? 
I I think uh, I think you're all being spied on by TV. <laughs> and, uh, Do you I, own I a just TV? hope you're watching the stuff that the the government wants you to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a TV? Um, there's there's one in the house in my in my shared house. It doesn't belong in to your me. Shed. Oh, you share a house. I, sh- in- I share a house. Oh. Yeah. I thought you said in your uh, shed. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, I, that was you know. In my first year of uni, I had a shared house, but I've <laughs> my rural retreat the shed, was the shed tax too dear. It was <laughs> because you had an extra shed combined to your shed. Oh, very. This, this was the, the <laughs> lamest, good. the lamest, <laughs> lutest satire possible, <laughs> shoehorned in the worst way. That is exactly what happened, and I'm furious <laughs> Thanks, about it because now I live in a shared house with. Uh, I, I'm, I live in an. It's not. It's not a room. It's an alcove with a door. And, <laughs> and there's a TV downstairs, and it's spying on us. Oh dear! Help! Can you say that again? Help! Help! help. Yeah. Do you want, like, should I whisper just, it again? Yeah, yeah. Help! I need somebody. I just love the. <laughs> <laughs> I just love just the sound. Of, I, just, I just love the sound of your voice. It's just in all its forms, just diminuendo, crescendo. Even when I'm talking complete and not a claptrap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Our government's spying on us. It just yeah, it just works for me. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't see why you need TV. Like last night, I had a cheese marmalade and garlic toasty, and a glass <laughs> and a glass of cheap red wine that smelled like cat. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of life do you lead? A very happy one, Richard. <laughs> well, it's going to be difficult for us without without television to do a comedy oh. review show. <laughs> To be honest, I mean, you just review the comedy you, of everyday life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Saw an old lady drop a. I mean, I'd, bag. You, I'd you, love to buy into your uh, beautiful hippie philosophy, but I just, I just, uh, how, how, how am I going to get a fourth series with that kind so of attitude? I. I wish I had some kind of like beautiful flowery ideology behind it, but the truth is, I just don't watch TV for what I, I don't know for whatever reason. <laughs> What's the next show, Rich? Uh, I might know it. Television wise, uh, we were, I wanted to talk to everyone about. Um, oh, this is Jinsey. Have you heard of that? <laughs> no. Right. Well, type of sweets. <clears throat> Jinsey. It's. Uh, I think it sounds like a drink. Personally, would you like a glass of Jinsey? Oh, I'd love one. Yeah, it sounds a bit like gin. gin, <laughs> gin, gin, gin yeah? Yeah? It's like fun gin for kids. You know, <laughs> fun gin. What's, what's it yeah, about? Bon uh, what is this is Jinsey about, Bryony? Because you've seen it as well, um, and I know that because we watched it at the same time. So. <laughs> Um, basically, there's sort of like a council on a weird island. It's just a weird island with this sort of a mayor observing all the people that live on the island. And this island's very weird. I can't. It's based it on. Did you see the mayor? No, he's called Maven. But Jinsey's this sort of. The uh, name of the, the island. Little, the, yeah, the, that's, that's, yeah the that's the word. <laughs> the name. <laughs> <laughs> and then they've got like this almighty sort of god thing on the island called the Great He that they have to keep bowing down to. Worshipping. Little TVs around the island called tessellators that talk to every resident. Uh-huh. And they have to watch the TV shows. Strangely enough, actually, it, ret- it returns to your theory of... <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, Connection. Uh, yeah, it's odd. Uh, it's a brilliant segue. Uh, yeah, they have to watch the TV uh, and the adverts that the tessellators put up and that the residents are forced, are <laughs> uh, compelled to take them in. And it's just like absolute babble. It's just nonsense. Oh, well. Cool. So it's a very surreal uh, programme. Apparently, it's ba- the two writers, um, I've forgotten their names, uh, based... Brown. Sorry? Chris Brown is one of them. That's uh, And the other... It's a mystery. <laughs> it's a, it is a mystery. mystery. <laughs> much, much like a lot of the content on the on the program. Um, yeah, apparently it's based on their experiences of growing up in Guernsey because they said it had the same kind of sort of island feel. Um, and I can back that up because my cousin lives on the Isle of Wight and she says it's quite weird as well. Like they have a, they, <laughs> she, no, there's like that a, was a loud. Like you sort of jumped away from me then. I did a laugh and it was. Just, <laughs> they, have like, they have like an islanders mentality, and that that they sort of really play up on that on on this is Jinsey, just with all the weird rules and laws that the people have to obey, and their very sort of insular um, outlook on life. Not that everyone who lives on an island is like that. We all live on an island technically, and I suppose you're pretty insular, aren't you, Kev? <laughs> Eddie, you're quite insular too. No, not at all. No, I'm very insular. cold. <laughs> Kev, would you describe yourself I, as insular? I would. Insular? What? Insulating myself against what? Against <laughs> against culture? Not insulated. Insula. Insular. What's the difference? If you're insular, you'll keep yourself to yourself. I'd say I'm mysterious. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say I'm saying mysterious. 
I don't think you're that Reclusive. mysterious. I think you're the sort of man. Well, it's because you. It's because you want the few who understand me. You revealed what sort of toast do you want. If you don't want the government to spy on you, <laughs> why are you revealing such personal information? Leeds Student Radio is the only place I can speak my mind without fear of somebody <laughs> overhearing me. <laughs> Fox <really> Pop. <laughs> okay, so my sociological uh, so survey. Don't worry, no one will hear what you say on here. I'd like to stress that I, I don't mean anything. Like 250 that. hits on YouTube, so you shut your mouth, Kevin. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so my sociological survey as to whether all of us as islanders are... What? What? What are you doing? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so... Never mind. Uh, So yeah, this is Chinzy. It's a really, really good show. And it's it's interesting because it's a slow burner. um, And it takes... What does it burn? Oh my god! Um, Slow... It's it's basically... Time... It blows... (laughs) It it blows time slowly. Burns time slowly. (laughs) (laughs) Review the program. <laughs> Sounds like a show title. It should be Burns Time Slow. <laughs> <laughs> Save it for your blog. <laughs> I don't have a blog. Yeah, you do. Do I? I've read it. Oh, have you? <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> it, and it wasn't very good. Oh, that's fair. It makes <laughs> that's a fair call. I'd say it sped up time when I was reading your blog. Oh. I think I think reading your blog time passes <laughs> at a pace of about forty-two seconds a minute. <laughs> <laughs> this is the ED theory of time travel I'm versus gonna, entertainment. For, 42 seconds a minute. Kev, I love, look, I'm still loving the voice, but if you carry on like this, I'm going to cut cut your mic off, all right? Like what? <laughs> if you just keep carrying on about this, all this nonsense about time dilation and... It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's just not what we want to hear, basically. Okay, uh, I really like this agency. <laughs> <laughs> You've never seen it, you liar. It's... <laughs> It's a commentary on the Cold War, essentially. Um, <laughs> and anyone who doesn't understand that can just... <laughs> Jeff off. <laughs> just oh Jeff God. off. Right, uh, Bryony, you, you've so, seen like, the programme. What did you think of, of the programme? I love it, but the songs... The, every episode has a different song. Like, it's one of them called Types of Wood. Oh, which just basically goes through <laughs> every type of wood. And I've had it in my head all weekend. They've sort of done like Simon and Garfunkel folk yeah. songs. There's a big connection to folk music in the Cisgency that the Islanders play. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's a brilliant one. Another really good one is they get Katie Tunstall to do one of the songs. She's dressed up as this like mad bearded Islander with one of those um, cable knit jumpers on. And the song, about onions. Yeah. Like. <laughs> it's, it's, what's the, 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 the opening it's line? W- it's cold and it's wet and it looks just like an onion. Yeah, and she just, she's just jumping around on stage <laughs> singing that over and over and over again. <laughs> it was it was truly excellent. So I loved that. Was, another thing is like with Casey Tunsley, you get all the different guests. Like they've got really famous like comedians and big names on it. Yeah. So got, like yeah. Jennifer Saunders, Catherine Tate. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, to Jennifer Saunders, not and, Catherine like, Tate. She's- uh, David Tennant was on it, and then there's Ugh. Kevin Eldon. <laughs> what? What's wrong what? with you? <laughs> um, so yeah, Kevin, Kevin really Eldon as well. And, um, Ali Slow is one of the main characters in it as well, so she's good. Who also appears in our film segment, uh, which we will get to uh, later on. Uh, but right now, I think we could do with a could we do with a break? Because I'll be honest, we've all bitten each other's throats, haven't we? <laughs> um, well, that's only because you're so teethy. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've been a bit of a bully this half. I'm going to try. I haven't been a bully. Yeah. Sorry? Haven't I? What? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Um, Kev, do you think I've been a bit aggressive this show? Um, Are we reviewing you <laughs> as part of the comedy? Yeah, I'm getting such? a bit. I'm getting self conscious. <laughs> Kev, have I been nice enough? Yeah, you've been. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know. That sounds like Are something you... a scared victim would say. Well, you're throwing to cut my mic off. <laughs> I mean, I like Richard. Just a bit like, um, I think I'll cut he, your tongue I, out. I think he's a perfect sort of representation, sort of like an allegory of the of the Cold War. Mm. Okay, we're just going to go to And anyone these. who doesn't understand that <laughs> can jeff off. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're going to go with the halftime song now. Uh, song. It's dedicated to Chris's absence. Uh, I know we were celebrating the fact that he wasn't here at the start, but... Well, that's a bit mean. I j- I'm just saying that this song is dedicated to his absence. It's a sad song about losing somebody. And I'm just sad song. Because genuinely deep down I think we all feel that it would be the show would be a lot better if he was here. So Chris, this this goes out to you. Someone 
Seems like yesterday we used to rock the show. I laced the track, you locked the flow. So far from hanging on the block for dough. Notorious, they got to know that. Life ain't always what it seemed to be. Words can't express what you mean to me. Even though you're gone, we still a team. Through your family, I fulfill your dreams. In the future, can't wait to see. If you open up the gates for me, reminisce sometime. The night they took my friend. Try to black it out, but it plays again. When it's real, feeling's hard to conceal. Can't imagine all the pain I feel. Give anything to hear half the breath. I know you're still living your life after death. I'll be missing you, featuring Faith Evans, uh, originally by P Diddy. It's not really originally by him. It's it's actually by the the police. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> I love that they stole something off the police. Yeah, uh, I'll, 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 I'll be missing you was uh, originally um, written by Sting about the all the royalties that he didn't get through the use of their um, the use of their song, and then then they nick the title as well and use that. But it was was it not? I'll, I'll be watching you. <laughs> no, because I just no, because it was written about is not getting the royalties for the song. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. It was a, it was. A, I tried to do a joke. <laughs> I try to keep. The, I try to keep things positive. I just made a bit of a joke. Just keep morale up. Yeah, and it worked. And it worked. <laughs> we all know there's no morale anymore, <laughs> Richard. <laughs> okay, so I, I want sorry. I just like trivia to be correct. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose your you you've. You've got quite a <laughs> pursu- pursuit of uh, of tri- trivia, <laughs> <laughs> but of course, it's it's, uh, it's a trivial pursuit. Okay, um, moving on from that, uh, in the most delicate of segues, uh, we're going to talk about some radio now instead of our internet section because um, I don't have access to the internet. Brian, I don't think you either. At the what moment, is it? Is it a type of fruit? Uh, I believe it's some sort of legislation. Um, <laughs> Kev, you mm-hmm. don't really, you know, you don't really interact with that kind of uh, that the, the digital world, of course. Not even the world of television. Do you listen to the oh, radio? No, no, Do you have I, a wireless? Yeah, I listen. I like to fall asleep listen to the radio, huh. um, and uh, 
you know, not so. I don't like being able to hear specifically what's being said. I just like murmurs. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the volume nice. right down. It's like someone's having a dinner party downstairs that you're too young to go to. Oh, that's lovely. That's I like nice that. Feeling, that's nice. It's a nice feeling. Because feel it's young like again. you know, life's still going on even when you you're not there for the evening. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, with that, I think we'd uh, yeah just. We'll play the radio bumper and then we'll talk some radio. Uh, I made this specially uh, for you, Eddie, because we don't normally do radio. I so, don't have uh, any headphones to hear it with, though. You can borrow mine. Oh, Wait, oh <laughs> a plethora of headphones like has been thrown at you. On and off. Which will you select? Kev's. Okay, I'm ready. So, now, Kev doesn't get to hear the bumper, so do you want my headphones? <laughs> well, this if, is just... if only you could sing it at the same time, then. That's I'll fine. give it a try. Could do. Cool. Okay, so here we go. I can't sing that. Radio. <laughs> the radio section. That was a lovely. The way you edited that was really nice. Well done. Thank you. Uh, yeah. It, uh, yeah. I really believed it was radio. <laughs> <laughs> I really believed what I was listening to was the radio. <laughs> I don't believe that this is radio. I don't think this counts. I don't believe in a lot of things. <laughs> Kev, do yeah. you believe? In what? Just anything. In anything? Yeah, do you believe? No. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Bri- Briny? Just nodding. That's not yeah. going to work for radio. Do you believe? Oh, I saw... Th- yes. Sorry. In- Sorry, no, go on. I saw three UFOs once. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time? Yeah. Because it doesn't count as once if they were separate. No, no, at the same time, in a triangular, three little metallic triangles in a triangular formation. I think this is lies. <laughs> That's uh, completely true. Um, so, radio. I'll tell you um, about it later. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah, uh, Eddie, you've been, uh, you've seen some radio stuff. Well, uh, And you've listened to it as well. <laughs> you would call not inclined to the moving image. Um, Pictures the sh- on the wind. Oh, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like I like the radio because it's voices in your head and you can listen to No, them. we're not reviewing radio. We're reviewing radio <laughs> shows that you've listened to. Oh, right. Okay. Remember sorry. those? Let's start with one. Okay, uh, so Radio 4 is mainly where I go for my hit of radio. We're not reviewing radio stations. No, no, we're reviewing no, no, the shows no. within the stations. <laughs> yeah. We went over this. <laughs> it's like a what? Russian doll. You know when you Idiot. watch the start of a film and it goes from space and it goes, Earth. Just one planet. Andrew it's Maxwell's zoomed. Public yeah, Enemies. Yeah, Tell right. me about yeah, Andrew yeah. Maxwell's Public Enemies. I'm doing the review equivalent of when a movie zooms into Earth. And so I've started with the radio in general, I've gone to the radio station, and we're zooming into a show. So, Radio 4, they, they in my in personal mente, they're probably one of the only radio stations that do speech shows, uh, with the exclusion of student radios, of course, but like national radios. Um, they're one of the only ones that do big speech stuff at the moment and I've been listening to two shows at the moment currently yes. and one of them is called Andrew Maxwell's Public Enemies and I enjoyed it excellent sort of explain it to everyone now Andrew Maxwell is a stand up comedian all the way from Ireland fresh off the ferry he's not <laughs> <laughs> he's been in the UK for a while but he's a stand up comedian he's a sort of politically edged uh, stand up comedian fella and uh, what he did for this show it was it, it was sort of an interesting idea um, sort of it was an interesting idea and it still is um, he's done four shows where he, he tackles four issues within uh, society or what he feels within society at the moment and he has some researchers and he does interviews so he's all clued up and he's got all sorts of facts to discuss it with so he's not just saying these big broad opinions without any backing to go with it so the first one was the food industry second one I can't remember um, <laughs> second one was oh was it the economy I mean, it feels too broad <coughs> the economy but the third one was drugs that's the one I heard that was the one this week Mm. And it was tough, as in hard hitting. Uh, I I agree actually. Uh, he I think uh, at a certain point in the show it became far more polemic than comedy, especially towards the end. Especially yes. the final note he ends on, which is sort of uh, the government's responsible for uh, a, a drugs policy that isn't working and it's destroying people's lives. <laughs> yeah. Do something about it, you know. Well, I think he's don't don't play with the microphone. Kev. <laughs> I just wanted to be able to see you better. It sounds like an old crane. I like how you waited until the most serious that. point of the I show know, is I didn't, on I didn't know it was going to do that. So I'm right, sorry. Why don't you, why don't you just Jeff off? Drugs are a serious... <laughs> look, because you invited me here. and <laughs> That I did, and now and I'm now regretting it. And now in this comedic frame. I don't know who's insulting me in reality and who's <laughs> insulting me in jest. We'll sort it out afterwards. Can I just move this so I can see your face? <laughs> okay. Oh, no, if I do... Okay. <laughs> just leave it as it is. Drugs. Serious. <laughs> 
but so in the show he does these hot topics, these tough issues, and he sort of breaks them down. Um, and I think he's a very he's likable. His sort of his style of comedy is very sort of in the room. We're all friends here. Yeah. If you if you've seen Andrew Maxwell before, you'll know it. If you've not seen him before, when you listen to it, you'll know it. Um, and I think I I think it, they're good. I think because yeah. compared to Alan Cochran did a show um, a few months back called Alan Cochran's Funhouse, where it was the same sort of theory. Like um, they record uh, a stand-up comedian doing a set, purpose written set in front of a live audience. And Cochran's was he took a room of that each room of the house and did stand up on it. And it was all right, but for me, it didn't really work. And I, it didn't, I don't know, it was interesting as an idea, but it didn't really work as a show, mm-hmm. in in my opinion. Uh, but I think Andrew Maxwell's Public Enemies does. I think it works in a much better way than a lot of the other times that BBC Radio 4 Productions tried to um, sh- sort of make a sort of copy and paste a stand-up's talents onto the radio. I see what you mean. Um, I was wondering as what everyone's view was on politically slanted comedy and the balance that you have to achieve between uh, hmm. polemic and comedy, because I didn't always feel that um, uh, Andrew Maxwell, with his sort of uh, we're all friends here approach to it, I didn't always feel that the balance was uh, sort of always achieved. Um, what do you mean? Do you mean like, because uh, I mean, one of the things that's... Um, always happens with political comedy is political comedy always has to have a stance really um and that stance will always divide 50 percent of every human being listening to it with people who agree with it and then will laugh at it and people who don't agree with it and either will sort of laugh beyond that yeah or, you know that you've lost half of your crowd immediately but then i'm assuming the audience was pretty much geared towards obviously agreement otherwise well, yeah. they wouldn't be laughing but then that's the problem because to me it begins to feel like a bit of a rally at times yeah as opposed to a I comedy show one. How how do you how do you guys feel about politically slanted comedy and having to achieve a balance between the two you know f- facets of it you know what do you think Kev what do you think I think um, t- t- to be honest it, it doesn't when when I've listened to shows by like Mark Thomas and more recently like Josie Long and stuff uh-huh. uh, I've got to admit it doesn't it doesn't irk me if there is a bit of you know a kind of bit of flat line if you like where it's just a serious argument yeah because uh, I enjoy that it's kind of like how you know, like a lot of comedy fans, that's it's a way of understanding the world. And if it's, you know, if there's a, an opinion voice within there, that's cool with me. But I can also appreciate, you know, it's uh, there's something, yeah, there's something kind of more admirable about when people um, are able to turn it all into jokes. Like like w- w- Wittgenstein, who I believe was a clever. So and so, yeah, Ludwig, the famous stand-up comedian. Yeah, like, he had, he had, well, he had the um, he had a, a there's a quotation by him which is something like, "There's no reason why a, a um, a thesis, a political thesis, can't be written entirely in jokes." Mm-hmm. Um, and so when that's achieved, <clears throat> I think it's really cool. Uh, and when someone comes close to achieving it, I think that's really cool too. Uh, I'm usually pleased. <laughs> I have to admit, I mean, I used to. I used to be quite sort of uh, hard on politically slanted uh, comedy because uh, I used to sort of go, it's getting too far away from the comedy, you know, the, the audience has come for a comedy show and it, it's it's not really, it's not getting there, it's not achieving that. But then when I saw Daniel Kitson, he sort of perfectly, I'd say, perfectly weaved uh, his comedy with a lot of philosophical musings in between them. You saw the show as well, didn't you, Eddie? Didn't like it. He didn't like it. No. Well, I thought he achieved. He, I thought he achieved a really nice balance. So it well, actually no, kind yeah, of. I appreciate what you saying. So it actually kind of showed me that uh, it's definitely possible, and it and it can be done. However, that was sort of philosophy as opposed to politics, which generally gets people more kind of riled and sort of um, what would be the word sort of polarized, I guess. Uh, Brian, what, what what do you reckon politically political comedy wise? Not a clue, really. I don't. I've, I'm not really. That's not kind of the comedy I tend to listen to. So I'm not very clued up on it. I don't feel like I know enough of it to make a a judgment per se. Is and that not my... a stance within itself? Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just but I think it's sounds a like. Fair. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Like, yeah. It, yeah. it sounds <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> the, the only thing I was thinking is the whole was a brand saga thing yeah, and yeah. the whole ah. worry of that, but. I've I can't wait. I'm off to see him live. So I'm like a massive fan. So where is he? <laughs> Sheffield. <Ooh. laughs> is he performing in Leeds? 
No. Yeah. Never mind. Times. But yeah, uh, that's the whole worry of things getting a bit too political and people taking comedy seriously. That's well, obviously, comedy should be taken seriously in some respects. But when they take jokes and analyse them and basically say this is a new way of life. Yeah, that's, that's that's true. The, the stuff thing. that's come out of his interview with Jeremy Paxman it kind of illustrates that. I think yeah. like what should you what parts of it should you be ad- addressing as a political sort of idea, and what parts of it should you be addressing as just comedy and him having a laugh and stuff. Yeah, so mm. it's, yeah, there's definitely. Well, I, I, I'm not familiar with uh, Russell Brand and what he's doing at the moment. But, it was on television, uh, so I'm oh, probably right. I'm assuming <laughs> that's why. Um. What are you? We do not throw in the studio. <laughs> We do not throw. We're running right. out of things oh, to throw. I went over this. <laughs> Get off your phone. <laughs> We're doing a show. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, now I'll be a minute. Yeah, it's talking about uh, talking about politics, <laughs> politics and comedy. <laughs> I wouldn't know what you're talking about. Ah, uh, oh, sorry, I'll go. I've got. To How go. much for his head? <laughs> <laughs> you, you it's me. all falling you apart. Have to take me home and look after me if you get it on my head. It's like a fish. Uh, <laughs> I think, okay, I think okay. There's a danger to over analysing jokes. It like to to like it, it, if you interpret stuff effectively, you, you're changing. You you you're giving something a meaning, and I think part of the fun of jokes is that there's no definite meaning. Mm-hmm. It's part of why it's. Exciting and dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> You're running out of steam, Kev. Yeah, I, is, um, uh, th- throwing back, that stuff. To move out. back to uh, Andrew Maxwell's Public Enemies, I feel if you listen to this, it's on the iPlayer. Uh, give it a listen. At um, the end of it, he does a little thing about like, oh, who thinks this? Who thinks that? Um, and I think, especially with the drugs one, more so than the others, it's been particularly divisive. Um, mm-hmm. Because. You can tell he does a joke at the beginning where it's like, now I'm not going to ask you how many of you have done drugs, uh, but I will be able to tell by the jokes that I make mm-hmm. who laughs. Um, and it's like and it's a good joke, but it's it's interesting how like you know with the food industry one. Oh, the internet was the second one. Oh, okay. And the food industry one and the internet one, it was more like I've got a lot of information that I'm going to tell you about this. Many people won't already know this sort of stuff, and there's also going to be some jokes in. Whereas I think with the drug one, it was. It hits home more, and it's more personal because it's more human in its nature. Okay. So I feel it, it probably ran the risk of being a little more divisive. Okay, that's fair enough. I think that's a I think that's a sound analysis. Thanks, Bob. Can I talk about the other show? Uh, yeah, if, you're quick, if, you, if you're quick, if you're quick, if you're quick. No, it's not worth it. Just go on. Okay. Just do it. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the horn, horn section. Horn section. Uh, oh, yeah. It's, oh, yes. you've seen that as well, Brian. Yeah, Listen to it. Oh wow, you're still alive. That's really cool. Um, they, uh, I've been listening to the radio show. Uh, they've been repeating it. It's lovely. It's like um, Alex Horn has his uh, jazz band called the Horn Section, and each week they play a certain type of music. They explore an instrument, and it's it, his jokes are pretty solid, mm-hmm. jokey jokes. Yeah. Um, and then he's got the band, and he says the jokes over the top of it, and they're very playful. And it's, oh, cool. It's very amusing. Is it anything close to kind of what Bill Bailey achieves with with Nothing music? Like it. Really. <laughs> no, um, because and this is actually interesting, <laughs> <laughs> which is good because up until now it's been I very, very dull. <laughs> no, um, well, I'm not sure if it is interesting, but it is. You'll have to say it first. Yeah, just say it. So, Bill Bailey, the jokes of Bill Bailey are, and sort of, it's halfway between with with the horn section. Um, mm-hmm. like a lot of people would compare like Tim Minchin and Bill Bill Bailey, which I don't think is fair because for me. Bill Bailey's jokes are in the music and the sounds of the music. Whilst he has silly, like, um, you know, human slaves in an insect nation. That's a funny, <laughs> it's a funny premise, but the joke is how the music sounds so intense for it. Yeah. You know, whereas Tim Minchin, the music's nice. But it's just but a it's, tune to sing to. You know, to. It's, the, it's the wittiness of his lyrics. Like Tom Lehrer. Like who? Tom Lehrer. You know he did the yeah. uh, Elements. Uh, the Elements song and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yes, Poison exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's an excellent one. Poisoning pigeons in the park. So it's more that it's like a more traditional joke song, like um, sort of folk, folky, folky, bawdy tales. Oh, okay, yeah. So um, which is sort of mentioned, but I think Alex like, Horn is more Bill yeah, Bailey-ish. Actually, he, he, they did it like food themed and they cooked things yeah, by yeah. like spelling out all of the, it was cabbage. Mm. Um, there's all this all the notes C A B B. Oh right. <laughs> so they just played the music of the cabbage, yeah. and they just played 
music that links to things and they do some cooking and they just it's just nice it sounds like a and good have, mix and they have a guest on every week yeah and they get the guest involved so like when i saw him live he did it had al murray oh right and they were doing like they were just making jerks at um about drummers and just doing <laughs> drumming duets with the al drummers murray was a drummer yeah. Really? Aye. Mm. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Indeed. Yes. For all the listeners in Leeds, that uh, yeah. For all the listeners outside of Leeds, that means yes. Uh, yeah. So I mean, it is. It plays with the music and it plays with the sounds, uh, which is lovely. And there's also some pretty solid jokes up in there. That sounds like a pretty good show. I wish I'd listened to it it's, now. You should. Go I wish back I'd heeded and your advice. It's a love. It's a lovely, lovely idea. Mm. And I had my doubts about it before listening, but then I listened. And it was it was nice. Just goes to show you shouldn't judge a radio show by its uh, title page. Pa- yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, its title page on iPlayer. Um, right, I think we're going to go to our final section, which is uh, live in Leeds. So let's play the bumper for that and just. Yeah, <laughs> see- so yeah, well, let's play the bumper. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. Don't get it. It's, it's time for Leeds comedy. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, I, can't, I can't get enough of those. Um, okay, so, live in Leeds time. Um, Kev. Rich. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> those are our names. Kevin. Um, I want to. <laughs> wanna... Let's not get into that again. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's yeah. Don't want to open that can of worms up. Um, yeah, so Kev, you have a theory concerning uh, the role of basements in comedy venues and how they can alter the success and dynamics of a stand-up show. Do you not? <laughs> sort of. I, I I have a high uh opinion of. No, I don't, I don't know. I, I I find comedy venues genuinely like to be a source of minor fascination, yeah. um, more so than any kind of craftsmanship in the actual uh, performance area. I I find the venues really interesting, and 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 I like basements. Um, and my theory behind what you know, I think a lot of people agree, basements are a good space for a lot of types of performance. Um, Stand up being one of them. Are you yawning, Eddie? <laughs> no. Or are, you do- or are you pulling the tongue out? I was sort of imagining eating a big wasp. <laughs> it is, I'm not going to lie, it's not It's not like the most like jolly of... Uh, no, no, it, the thrust of my uh, philo- philosophy about why basements is good for stand-up is basements are places which are simultaneously kind of a sanctuary and also a place of subterranean danger. Um, and stand-up generally tries to take two opposing forces and reconcile them. And I believe that that's something that the basement and stand-up comedy has um, um, in, in common, common. Yeah. which is the recon- the attempt to reconcile opposing forces. Um, yeah. Interesting theory. I, th- I, I believe I th- that's what got me on the show today. <laughs> yeah, I, think that, I, th- I definitely think there's something in that, personally, because... Uh, there is, but it doesn't mean anyone wants to know it. Well, know, there is. That's, that's, that's an interesting there's theory. There's a film. Uh, there's a film about this. Uh, there's a film sort of about this uh, called I Am Comic, which is um, it's a documentary that goes around America talking to yeah, a lot. Yeah, but it doesn't really... Well, no, it meant it's no, more about it doesn't, it doesn't completely crack the. I mean, you're looking at it from a very sort of um, sociological viewpoint, but from a practical level, um, basements are also good because they have yes. a low ceiling, which means the laughs are kept in. It's dark, which uh, is not all basements do have a low ceiling. If you go to the the, the stand in Newcastle, for example, that's quite a high ceiling. Really, um, still an excellent venue. Well, but. <laughs> Could you imagine that? It's like I just choose. Oh no, I'm going to slag off the venue of uh, the most popular alternative comedy place in the world. Oh, I think uh, that's who, that's why. But, but see, a lot of the stuff in I Am Comic is about uh, room layout, which is all like, yes, really important uh, in terms of like having a good comedy, good venue for comedy. Um, but uh, but it doesn't really look into like what it what it what it says to our subconscious when we go into a subterranean area because because our, our our culture is kind of like um saturated with notions of 
when you go underground of it being like this a mixture of danger and excitement and um and i think that's I definitely think there's something in that. Um, this sort of experience you go there's through when you're definitely you walk- not a job in it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, I, Sorry, it yeah. doesn't have to be. It when just has to be interesting. You know, going underground. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there's like <laughs> often <laughs> the brass band will play, and it starts to pound. <laughs> if you dig for far tomorrow, enough, there's a brass band. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. I, but no, no, I definitely feel it adds to something as uh, as an experience when it when uh, shows do actually take place below ground. There's a sort of uh, experience as you're descending. Uh, there's there's also, an anticipation. There's an extra anticipation and excitement. There's also a symbolism that you're kind of going onto the edge of something, and 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 that's kind of again that's something which you know this comedy is supposed to um, summon up in in you. It's this feeling that you know you're you're on the borders. You're, you're pushing mm. parameters. Um, I mean, like that, like what we've been doing today, it's guys, clandestine really to an extent, some, <laughs> pushing yeah, the boundaries of student radio I to their think, breaking point. I think that underground or overground, <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone should go watch some live comedy. Yeah, in a nutshell. Yeah, just uh, playing a bit of smooth jazz because we're near the end of the show oh, now. No. So can we can we talk about some live comedy that's about to happen? Uh, no, yeah, we haven't got enough time. Really? Maybe if you'd uh, been quiet earlier <laughs> and f- and for longer like periods of time, we'd we'd be able to do that. But no. So I want to thank all of our guests for turning up. Uh, Kev Eady, Bryony Jameson, and Eddie Hurst. Really, we're not allowed to. Thank you so much for turning up, guys. Uh, I think Kev was the special guest this week. I enjoyed your contributions the most, despite the fact that you'd done the least research. So you get to be the special guest of this show. You guys, uh, very disappointing. C plus, <laughs> six out of ten. Oh, you're, speech- you're speechless for once, Eddie. I, just, I thought we'd be allowed to at least tell people what comedy was going on. Oh, yeah, no, we, we, we can do that, yeah, sure. You sure? Because you said we couldn't, and I was a bit taken aback. You're spending more time Say discussing, it. not... I thought you meant I it. thought you meant like specific shows, you, but you just mean events that are happening. Yeah, I mean, sure, like, man, go for Pigeon it. Hall on the 11th November 2013. Yeah, that one, a week on Monday. At the Bruden, yeah. that. That's going to be a great Club. one. I've got really high hope for that. It Luke is, Sanders is in it. She's bloody lovely. It's amazing. Watch her on YouTube. If you like her there, you're going to like her even more when she's live. Two pounds <laughs> entry as well for some, some of the, Social Club. For some of the best comedians I have ever seen. It's it's phenomenal value for money. And he's seen some comedians. I've, se- I've seen a few. I've seen you. Uh, and did you like me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> and I've seen Kev and a, a few other people as well. I think Kev's a great comedian. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if I can manifest all the ideals that are pregnant in the phrase comedian. You come on stage and you're pregnant. There's not a lot this more we can ask for. Running out of time, Kev. Yeah, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to bring Running it full circle. This is structure. I'm trying anyway. to bring it full circle back to what we discussed at the start of the show. Oh, okay. it's a nice closing moment. Uh, <laughs> but other other gigs. That are on. Yeah. Um, there's Verve every Tuesday, which is a new act. That's a really nice. That's in a basement. It's in a. It's a lovely awesome room. basement. Um, you yeah. should go down to that and support it. It's free if you fancy watching some uh, brand. Like it's new material, new act. So it's not. It's not the sort of the caliber and slickness of Pigeonhole. Yeah. But it's it's lovely. It's lovely. As there's well. uh, the side room Wednesdays at TJ's. Yep. Uh, starts at eight thirty, I believe. Uh, so there's that. There's Pigeonhole. There's Verve. And there's uh, Milton Laughs with Wit Tank in a couple of weeks. Oh, when uh, yes. Two weeks today. Two weeks today. Excellent. That's yeah. something very exciting to look forward to. That's in the University Union. Yeah. Um, there's regular gigs on at the stadium? <coughs> Have they started yet? Or is, that in, is that more summertime? The stadium, uh, I'm the stadium sure. gig. Are we just the... doing a really big overview? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's, there's Tony plenty. Tony Law this Thursday. Sorry? 7th of November, Tony Law's. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, so, so that's show in That's at the library, is it? Not no, oh. City Varieties. He's gone City up for right. It's at ah. 4th November. Oh, is it the same day as this game? Andrew Lawrence as well. When's he, when's he 14th. coming? 14th. 14th. Uh, most importantly, a week tomorrow. Pigeonhole. Pigeonhole, yes. Top uh, of the list. Of all of them, I would say top of the list. <laughs> Go see it. So thank you so much for turning up, guys. Thank it's you been a lovely show. Me, yes, no problem. And yeah, we're on same time uh, next week. Unfortunately. Uh, Chris Donkin's very own uh, Apocalypse Nowabouts won't be following this uh, program because um, for various reasons that I don't want to go into, most of which involve water aerobics. <laughs> um, so yeah, we'll we'll see you next time, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, goodbye. Say bye, everyone. Bye. bye. bye.